The Jimmy Z Show. Right, Jimmy Z and the Jimmy Z Wednesday show. It is Wednesday, October 20th, 2010. And I am more than happy to have David Limbaugh on with me. David Limbaugh's book is Crimes Against Liberty, an indictment of President Barack Obama. We continue now. I wanted to ask you about uh, one of the other things that I found most disturbing. And these kinds of things, in my mind, are very hard to let go of, and that is the offering of jobs for Democrats in Colorado and Pennsylvania to drop out of a race, I think in, I think for Senate in both cases, but drop out of the race, this is entirely illegal. And it's hard to pay attention to these kind of stories and, and not want some kind of uh, uh, justice to be rendered by the Republicans. Well, I, you know, let me put it this way: They, it's it is outrageous. It's outrageous that Obama pledged 140 billion dollars to the IMF for redistribution to third world countries against any constitutional authority, any and against the express will of Congress. Even when they told him he didn't have authority, he said, "I'm commander in chief. I can. This is foreign policy. I can do what I want." And it wasn't foreign policy. It was foreign aid. Uh, it was an Orwellian argument. Or even more outrageous when Senator Kyle of Arizona sent a letter to Obama saying that the stimulus money you've spent so far hasn't stimulated anything. I think you ought to freeze what has not been spent. And four of his cabinet secretaries simultaneously sent a letter to Kyle threatening to withhold Arizona's portion of the stimulus money because they didn't like his presumptuous suggestion, as if it's their money to withhold or dispense as they want. Or when the White House or Congressman Waxman summons executives, insurance executives, to Congress or the White House and make them justify why they send a certain filing, a regulatory filing, saying that they'll have to cut uh, their uh, care if Obamacare is uh, put in place, or insurance companies raising their rates and making them justify when they have absolutely no authority to do it, or canceling bids, as I talk about in crime, Crimes Against Liberty, for the Constellation Project with NASA, when he has no authority to do that, and Congress forbid him from from canceling NASA, and he says, I didn't cancel it. Yet he canceled the bids, which in effect means it has to be canceled, just as when he dismantled uh, or when he assembled these these uh, tiger teams to, to uh, dismantle uh, the project. All of that, and he claims he wasn't doing it. Just complete trickster. When he has the EPA uh, do an end run around Congress declaring uh, the carbon dioxide a toxic uh, pollutant so that he can regulate and establish new emission standards. I mean, there's just more, more. you know, his his thing with uh, Gerald Walpin, the uh, uh, in- Inspector General for AmeriCorps, when he uncovered corruption on the part of Obama's friend uh, in your state, and who had to pay back his own money, and, and the St. Hope Charity had to pay back half, almost half of the 850000 entrusted to it. Uh, they, Gerald Walpin, Uncover this investigation and, and the board. Obama fired him. He's supposed to. He said he would enhance the authority of inspectors general. He told uh, Walpin to get out. He gave him one day to resign, or he would be fired. When Walpin refused, uh, he he put him on paid administrative leave, which is the same thing as firing. And instead of uh, instead of rewarding him for for do for a job well done and for uncovering this corruption. Like I said, he fired him and threatened to slander him, and he, he told him, said in public, all, all these board members said uh, he was incompetent and confused at the board meetings. They had to get rid of him. And yet a week or so later, after they claimed that, they invited him to speak to 2,000 people, proving they didn't think he was incompetent. So this is a corrupt bunch of thugs. I and mean, you talk about these individual things, promising judgeships, promising jobs. There are hundreds of things I talk about in Crimes Against Liberty that make your blood boil uh, equally uh, as well. So how do we see that? That <laughs> I mean, it sounds preposterous that all this could go on. And I've talked many times on my show about you know a law that is unenforced isn't really a law. So how do you get? Uh, how do you turn things around so that a president or the House or the Senate cannot just disregard rules and protocol and law? Well, I mean. 
you know, we, the, the founding fathers set up a system. The framers of the Constitution set up a system pitting the branches against each other so that they would keep each other in check because they know that man is fallen, that man is flawed, and that left to his own devices will subjugate other men, which has been the history uh, of the world and, and the history of statecraft. So they set up this unique system recognizing man's fallen state, pitting uh, men against men in the various competing branches of government so as to keep any branch or level of government, the doctrine of federalism, and e e any branch, the doctrine of separation of powers, from getting too powerful at the expense of the others and at the expense of our individual liberties. And so you, you, you don't have uh, every perfect mechanism. You can't say, for example, if a prosecutor uh, is not prosecuting a law, well, there's not much you can do about it except uh, unelect him the next time, throw him out, because he has prosecutorial discretion to prosecute things he wants to and not others. Uh, if, if judges ignore the law uh, or, or if they rewrite the law, uh, your remedy is to either impeach them, or, but then you've got congressmen who agree with them, so you're not going to impeach them, and that's such a traumatic thing, such a divisive thing. You don't see it happening. So few... So rarely do judges get impeached. So you try to uh, get them removed later in, in, in the election unless they're appointed for life. But, I mean, the, the system is not perfect, and so we have to work with it. And, and it's only as good as uh, the honor of the people. Remember, John Adams said this Constitution is made only for a moral and religious people. And I think what he ultimately meant was that while the framers realized we were, uh, the man was flawed, they expect some honor. They expect men to at least work within the system and to not, to, to not act extra-constitutionally and the courts to, to uphold it or, or to, to uh, <clears throat> safeguard the Constitution. But we can't, you know, we can't uh, expect perfection. And I just wish we would have, we're so divisive among the parties that <clears throat> the, the Democrats will rally around uh, no, no uh, limit of corruption. That's what, you know, I really do think conservatives and Republicans uh, police themselves because they believe in the rule of law and they believe in, believe in playing fair. And the other side fights dirty because they don't believe it. Now, a Democrat would say that's preposterous. You're just saying that because you're partisan. I'm really not saying it that way. I think uh, the Republicans are more likely to fight by the uh, Marcus of Queensberry rules while the Democrats kick below the belt. And, and they end up advancing as a result. But I still don't think that's an excuse for us uh, to adopt their ways. I think that um, in my course of observation over many years now, it seems that in general, Republicans tend to dismiss their scoundrels while Democrats exactly. and liberals embrace and protect their scoundrels. I remember uh, Gary Studs back in, what was it, the 1980s, who actually committed rape of a 17-year-old page and he was protected by Democrats and reelected four times. Oh, they're celebrated. Look at the guy with the, the cash in the, in the freezer, how long that took. Look at Wrangell. I mean, in our guys, we have, you know, we have a guy saying, Makaka, who, George Allen, <laughs> he's out of there. For yeah. Just saying something that didn't even matter. I mean, it's, it, it, there is a complete double standard, and, and I guess we'll have to uh, accept it as Republicans. We don't say, well, as a result, we'll, we'll, be, we'll get down in the gutter with you. But... We should point out their hypocrisy and, and, and their sanctimony and, and how ridiculous it is. But, you know, I, there's no question that when you don't uh, honor the Constitution, it slowly unravels the system that is designed to preserve our liberties. And, and that's why we conservatives who believe in originalism, the Constitution being read according to its original intent, we believe it's not just a matter that, of being pro-life. We're not for judicial activism to reverse, I mean, to uh, force states to pass law or to force states to be uh, anti-abortion. It's that we believe that the Constitution doesn't speak to it and that uh, it, the matter ought to be referred back to the states to be decided democratically by their state legislators. Now, some conservatives believe that that the abortion thing transcends that and, and through the declaration and all that. And I'm, I'm, I'm receptive to that idea, too. I'm not trying to get into a technical argument about abortion, but the point is we don't believe in judicial activism even to impose substantive conservative policies. We believe in the Constitution being a regulator of government powers and limitations and honoring those, and, and, it's, and that it's policy neutral.
You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely.